It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul and Mary Jo are back. Mary Jo's in Toronto for the Microsoft Partner Conference. Lots of news there, including it looks like ship dates for Windows 8. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 269, recorded July 12th, 2012. Mail Order Lemmings. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC. Go to My PC from Citrix connects you directly to your Office Mac or PC from any other computer and from your iPad or iPhone. Sign up for a 30 day free trial today at go to mypc.com. Use the promo code Windows. And by Ford, featuring the My Ford Mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles. The My Ford Mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, visit Squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS7. And don't forget to take advantage of the free domain registration with annual plan subscriptions. It's time for Windows Weekly. Oh, Paul just fell out of the frame. <laughs> the show I'm that here. It covers. I was putting. I was putting a disc in my. Oh, a floppy disc or a zip no, disc, <laughs> right. or perhaps you have an orb. A Bernoulli disc. A Bernoulli <laughs> disc. A Bernoulli box. Wow, that's a memory. I was just showing Paul and Mary Jo before the show began. Mary Jo Foley also with us. Looks like, and she's in the Witness Protection Program. It's pretty close. She's in <laughs> Toronto. Sure. I'm That's in Microsoft sort of Canada. Toronto. Microsoft Toronto, yeah. Wow. The frozen tundra. So thank you for making the effort to join us. We are The connection is not great. I know uh, the folks there are working on it, and uh, if if necessary, we'll recall you just so uh, the people understand what's going on. We were talking about um, the early days, and somebody, a fan, and I wish I had been here to thank him. Here's volume one, number one, of PC Magazine. The Independent Guide to IBM Personal Computers, $3, charter issue. And, of course, what's that on the front but an IBM original? Is it an AT or is it? No, it's the original. Uh, no, that's got to be the It's not even an XT. Be. It's the original. Yeah, the original, yep. Look at that in the green screen. Yeah. The uh, good old days, Leo. <laughs> this was when a computer was a computer. <laughs> yeah, Inside right. the IBM PC. This is yeah. from 83. Wow. Yeah, that one I have. I have a, an extensive collection of Byte magazines, actually. Oh, it's so fun to have these. And that one, too. Yeah, the, the Macintosh. The, I have the next, you know, the next issue is also very interesting. It's Burl Smith and uh, Andy Hertzfeld. No, um, Bill Atkinson. Bill Atkinson. Wow. Too. These are amazing. This one, the HP 150 Touch of Magic. Unix. On micros. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it wow, only this... took another 20 years. I, well, and there's two floppy side by side. I wish they made them like this. That was a solid, that was a machine machine. Mm, mm. A satisfying kerchunk every time you ejected the <laughs> disc. <laughs> Remember that? There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing like a mechanical device. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. We've come a long way, baby. Have we, though? I, don't I guess know. we have. I don't know. We have a date, or uh, it seems if we might have a date uh, for um, Windows. The date is a lie. It, no. <laughs> is it real? Is it true? RTM in early August. That's ready to manufacture. And mm -hmm. uh, general availability late October. That's kind of what we thought, right? Yeah. It is what we thought. No surprise basically. here. Yeah. No. Well, ex except that I've been hearing from people at Microsoft uh, off the record that the schedule was a little little earlier than that. So I guess we'll see. I mean, I, I still sort of expect them to, in fact, beat this amazingly arbitrary date that they created and, and suggest that they did it early, even though they're the ones making up the dates, you know, like they did with the <laughs> release preview. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see the, them announce RTM right at the end of July or August 1st or something close to that. But we'll see. So they've said early. They've said the first week of August. I think was the way they said it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Actually, somebody suggested yeah. to me via email, the first week of August is also the last week of July. Point well taken. But what does that mean for a user? It, RTM doesn't mean uh, that you know, you'll be able to get it or anything, right? This is when the whining starts, Leo. <laughs> yeah. And this year, and, and, no. this time, this time, there's going to be, this time it's personal. There's going <laughs> to no, be well, some loud noises coming from uh, users, I would guess. Well, no, I mean, this is very interesting, right? So I, I, a lot of the discussion around Windows 8 has been whining so far, right? People complaining, we don't like it, we don't like it, we like And I think what we're going to see that when RTM occurs, the whining is going to change. And it's going to change to oh, how come I can't get it yet? Uh, of course, you know? yes. And it's going to. I it's hate it, and I don't, and I want it now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am an SA customer. I am an MSDN subscriber. I am right. a TechNet subscriber. Right. Uh, I am an Action Pack subscriber. <laughs> whatever. Uh, when do I get it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, that's what the, that's the conversation that we're going to start having in about a month. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. But I, I think that if we look back on how they did things with Windows Seven, we have a blueprint for how it can occur. We know that. All of those entities that I just mentioned will get Windows 8 ahead of schedule, you know, before October. So, you know, it strikes um, me that um, in in some ways, because Microsoft they did this with Seven, but they did it even more so with Windows 8, have really made it easily, uh, freely available to anybody who is in the least bit interested to try it. That in some ways that may mute any uh, protest because it's not there's there aren't any surprises now. I have I have a potential surprise. I'll throw this out. This isn't in the show notes. It just occurred to me. Uh, and I received an email from, from someone about this topic today. Perhaps I should refer to it. But the basic gist of it was that uh, it was regarding the OEM, uh, the OEM system builder site, right? And we know that one of the interesting things that came out last week was that basically everyone's going to get Windows 8 upgrade, that $40 upgrade for that price, right? That everyone basically qualifies for that. Um, interestingly, and, and then people checked into this because remember with previous versions of Windows, one of the cheap but semi-illegal ways you could acquire Windows was through an OEM version, right? People would buy Windows Home Server that way, for example, right. to install it on their own computers. Technically speaking, if you're going to get an OEM version, you had to be a system builder. It had to be uh, accompanying a hardware purchase, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, people could do that. Um, this person is telling me that uh, do-it-yourselfers would be able to legally use the Windows 8 System Builder Media Kit for their own use. And the reason is there will be no retail full versions of Windows 8, only upgrades. Hmm. I heard that, too. I, I heard yeah. that also. So I, 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 that's None curious at all? because that is the one surprise. That's the one surprise is, like, what are the, what are the, the actual final ways yeah. that people are going to get the product be, right? Right, I mean, because it's not just know. about... Yeah, we have the special promotion for forty dollars, and so we don't know there's the an price. instant. Yeah, we don't know. Well, so what's the actual upgrade price, right? We know right. it's not forty dollars because that's the special promotion. Uh, we theorized last week that maybe they could make that permanent. That would be great, but you know, I don't personally see them doing it, but I think they should. But I hope they do. But I don't see it happening. But you know, there's also a full version of Windows, typically. Maybe not anymore. Yeah. That you would know? be really weird. That would be really great. <laughs> well, but I don't even understand how that would work. Well, are you saying the only way you could get... Uh, uh, because I think we're at a point in time where nobody does not upgrade, uh, uh, qualify for the upgrade. And if nobody doesn't up, well, doesn't wait a minute, qualify, though. What if you're be building your that. own system? If, that what they're saying is this time around, they've changed the licensing so that you qualify. So if you're building a system for yourself... Oh, you mean you mean building a system? Yeah, for, what if so I sell? order the parts from Newegg? Then what? That that's then that's when you buy the OEM version. Oh, so there's, that, there is an OEM version. Well, there has to be, of course. I well, mean, right, uh, yeah. they're going to install. You know, Windows has to be sold with new computers as well. So system builders uh, would be able to buy an OEM version. Um, I, I really, I don't think people understand the depth to which everything is changing this time around and this thing that we're talking about right now is obviously a piece of it but you can also look at things like the file history stuff that they talked about this mm -hmm. week on the blog where in the past there were these really monolithic tools for backing up your computer and if you had home server you could do it in a centralized location but you would literally have a tool that would examine every sector of your disk and it would make a copy of it somewhere else so that you could restore that whole thing that is completely changing in Windows 8. It's a completely different system. It's going to freak some people out because it's so different. It's freaking it's, me out, man. It, well, but, <laughs> but I think that, but, you know, it's funny because we make fun of Microsoft because they always use this term, reimagining. You know, we're reimagining Windows. We're reimagining this, you know, blah, 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 blah. We joke about it. But, you know, the truth is when you really look at what they're doing, 
it's you know it's Windows. It's the next Windows. It's definitely the the next version of the same product. But they really are changing so many things at such a deep level and changing this type of thing. I, I don't I don't know if it's true. But why like, why do that? that happens, what is the what what is to be gained by doing? It's that? not change for change's sake. It's change. Uh, in this case, maybe for simplicity or, or sake or for doing the right thing's sake. You know, in other words, we've always had this complaint every time a new Windows version came out. Do you buy a full version? Do you buy an upgrade version? How come I don't qualify for the upgrade version? How come I, as a win an existing Windows customer, can't just buy the upgrade version and do a clean install easily? Um, you know, on and on it goes. And so, you know, it's almost like saner heads have prevailed, assuming, again, assuming this is true, where we're going to get the upgrade. Like we just like they're going to treat us like human beings for a change. I think Mary you know, Jo is about to get the upgrade. Somebody just walked in. Is there? <laughs> as, long as, as long as they yep. don't slip that thing around her neck. <laughs> Something's going on. In, in here's there. your cable, Mary Jo. Somebody has crawled <laughs> under the desk. Yes, yeah, Steve Ballmer says. Under the desk. So they're going to no wire cable. you. They're going to no. wire you. They're not, they're not no going to Fredo right? you in the <laughs> in the room there. Hold on, I have to have a consultation with my friend here. All right, we'll we'll uh, pretend Mary Jo is in another country. I feel and, like I'm watching uh, The Godfather too. <laughs> if she doesn't come back, <laughs> right? It's just me and you again, Leo. But uh, you know, it's I, I agree. That's in one way. That's a way to say, um, "Hey, everything's different." It certainly attracts attention. Yeah. Uh, it also is making a statement, isn't it, about um, uh, how easy it is to upgrade in place. I'm just thinking, what, what is the... What is the well, you know what? Uh, seriously, I, I, you, can, you can make this kind of conversation up about almost any aspect of this, right? So, for example, they have this thing called a web-based installer. And the web-based installer is the old setup program, the one that's always been there on the ISO or the disk or whatever. You'd run through setup and hit, hit a wizard and do a certain number of steps and Windows would be blasted on your computer. Yeah. So they have that. Yeah. But it also has this other stuff built into it that examines your system. It does an upgrade advisor. It runs a report. It tells you what's going to work, what's not going to work. It gives you little hints. They will say things like, hey, you've got iTunes installed. You might want to make sure you deauthorize that before you do the upgrade. You know, nice little things like that. It has the Windows Easy Transfer tool. So you can do upgrades and migrations where it takes your data, your documents, your settings, and it carries them forward to the new install. It has all this additional stuff in it. And... You could you could look at that like oh my god that's so great they did they made this huge improvement how wonderful is that but every time you uh, someone like me writes about that you get emails from people say well yeah but am I still going to be able to do the old install <laughs> you know I want the one with less <laughs> you know they get nervous like they're, they're like but but I used to do it this way I know this way you know I I want it to be like it was in Windows XP do they have that version of setup yeah you know well, that's and, just and people people are that it's way. just Right, but I mean that's but that's my point about how the conversation changes. Right, so this just stops it cold. You just say well, no. It, it's it, right. It, 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 it's when Windows Phone came out. You know, one of the big things that people uh, had to get over, and they're still not over. People are still running into this when they first get Windows Phone. I'll get an email every week. Someone will say, uh, "Yeah, so you've been talking about Windows Phone for two years now, and I finally decided to buy one. And uh, how come it doesn't? Am I missing something? It doesn't seem to sync with Outlook. And it's like, guys, seriously, we've been talking about this for two and a half years." It's a cloud-based system. It, it connects to accounts in the sky. It does not a connect to your PC. It's meant to be like this. Mm. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want mm. it to work the way it used to work. You know, and, and Windows 7 uh, has, I'm sorry, Windows 8 has some aspects of that as well. You know, the, the mail app that's in Windows 8 is based on the mail app that was in Windows Phone. It connects to cloud-based Really? Wait services. a minute. That's interesting. The that's mail app does. in 8 is the same or based on the one in... Right, right. So we're going, we're, we're, going, app, we're going down a rabbit hole here, but I, 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 <laughs> yeah. will, I will throw out a, a concept that I had in an article just, I think, yesterday based on uh, the review I'm starting to write of Windows 8, which is this, that Windows 8 is not Windows 7 plus other stuff. Windows 8 is a brand new mobile operating system. It is aimed specifically at highly portable and mobile devices, and they added Windows to that. Mm -hmm. And that Windows 8 is, in fact, something that is very much like Windows phone, a Windows RT, mm -hmm. running on Intel processors that happens to also have a desktop and run all your old apps. That's what it is. It's, it's not the other way around. It's, it is, in fact, a mobile operating system. And uh, those apps that are built in, all of them, are either based on apps that are already in Windows Phone or are uh, new apps that work in the same way. And so they're all connected to online services. The music or the video app are actually Xbox Music and Xbox Video. They connect to Xbox connected services. That's what they do. The mail app connects to EAS accounts in the RTM version, it will connect to IMAP, but it will not connect to POP accounts. It will not connect to 
your email store in Outlook or whatever you have on your computer. It's not meant to work like that. It's meant to connect up to the cloud. That's what it does. So some people will see the benefit in that. Some people will not. And that's going to be the conversation we're going to have for the next year now because – or plus. You know, people will move to, from Windows 7 to Windows 8 a year and a half from now and I'll get an email and say, hey, uh, I don't know what's going on here, but all my Outlook mail is not in mail. What's, what's, uh, what's going on there? And it's what going to be the, the same hell? conversation. What the hell yeah, is happening here? No, I don't mean to make fun of them, but I mean it, it's, it's a conceptual divide and, and you can see it everywhere. It, it, assuming this thing about the upgrade version is true, you can see it there. You can see it in setup. You can see it in the apps. It's all over the place. It's – they, I mean, God, I, I feel like I'm. Look, I got a little pom poms today. You know, Microsoft is reimagined <laughs> Windows, and I just, you know, I people have waited for this moment. I, uh, this magic Give me moment. <laughs> yeah. so, and you know, the other the other thing we haven't really said, but it's kind of implied here is another reason they're doing this and and kind of reducing the number of versions and making it more easy to get and lowering the price. It seems is because of Apple, right? I mean, we haven't said that explicitly, but I mean, they're. This is the the new reality that people expect, especially in the mobile space on tablets. And if you don't have that, then people are like, "Why right. don't you have that?" that mm-hmm. Like that's, that's, a, that's the way a, the world that's works. An excellent way to put it. What you just said is actually right. It is absolutely right. It is what people expect, and that's exactly right. I, I think that Microsoft has done a bad job of anticipating in the past what people expect. This time around, I think it's really hit them in the face that they need to deliver what people expect, and that is what people yeah. expect. Yep. Well, this is that is you know you, uh, quite a sh- kind of you're right. They're a little okay. It's shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It's, it's, I'm going to take some a little while to get used to that kind of the It's idea, like a movie notion. poster from a, a '50s horror movie that wasn't really that scary. Right. You'll be so scared, you'll be peeing in your pants. <laughs> Not really, but guaranteed. Uh, interesting. You know, Surprising. We'll refund your movie ticket if it doesn't happen. <laughs> and then there'll be like a water thing squirting your pants, you know, from under the seat. Yeah, see, we told you your pants would be wet. Um, <laughs> Yeah. B- business. We, get some, we get some other dates this week, too. Yes, we talk about yes fire dates. away. Yeah, um, so it's not just Windows 8 RTMing by the first week of August, but also Windows Server 2012 is going to as well. No big surprise. Mm-hmm. But um, users aren't going to get the their shot at getting those bits until September. Um, so that's uh, a little later than the business users are going to get Windows 8. Business users are going to get Windows 8 in August, um, but they're going to get Windows Server in September. And uh, the other one that we got the date for was Visual Studio 2012. That also is RTMing at the same time, just like it has been consistently. And we don't know when people are going to be able to get those tools because Microsoft won't say yet. So it, it, you'd assume shortly after the release to manufacturing. Okay. Clarity. Mm. Clarity. <laughs> <laughs> when am I going to get Visual Studio, Mary Jo? That's what I want to know. I know. See, you're already whining about that, aren't you? <laughs> I'm back, baby. You're back. All right. <laughs> the pom poms have gone down. The right, Eeyore right. is back. <laughs> uh, uh, what are the numbers? Six hundred thirty million. There's another number. Yep. Yeah. So if you do the simple math on that, uh, this, that's number of licenses sold of Windows Seven. They kind of wow. threw that one out. It was I think Ter- Tammy Rella probably that's at the uh, partner conference. Yeah, that's twenty million a month. So, um, you know, Windows Seven. I'm sorry. Yeah, Windows Seven shipped in October two thousand nine. You know, that's X number of months. I, whatever that is off the top of my head, but it's roughly twenty million licenses a month, and that's that's that number. And and over the past year or so, we've had this conversation every once in a while. They'll release the number of licenses, and I'll say that's roughly twenty million a month, and it still is. So, you know, Windows Seven has been a fairly consistent seller, which is either them cooking the books or uh, <laughs> selling these things mm-hmm. at a fairly consistent rate. So. Yeah. That's good. Six hundred thirty million. Yeah, pretty it, big it, number. That's yeah. amazing. Um, how many copies of Windows Server have they sold? Six hundred and thirty. It's a it's a different market. <laughs> that yeah. that includes Windows Home do. Server, I, sort of <laughs> which they're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul, have you recovered from last week after that? I have. I have. Shock. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm uh, going through the what is it? Twelve stages of grief. Yeah, you know? yeah. Denial. It st- starts at the anger, then then terror, and then <laughs> well, gnashing of to, teeth. Uh, yeah, it's different <laughs> stages when you're like a tech enthusiast because there has to be some weird compulsion involved. So, um, I will do a crazy last minute upgrade to some unnecessary <laughs> system right before I go on a three week trip just to that's throw you. a little wrench. In, yeah, that's, yeah. That's you got to do Paul stuff Thera. like that. Yep. Oh, that's our Paul. <laughs> That's right. Which is like, would be a great sitcom. Again, That's but. our Paul. He's done That's it again. Uh, the schedule for Windows Server 2012. 
A little different. A little, little different. A little different. What yeah, is that? A little different. That's the numbers we just gave you. That's the, oh, you already um, did it. Oh, I wasn't yep. paying attention. But why he is it? But why? I'm but we should we should uh, talk a little bit about why it's different, right? In other words, server. Yeah. Why uh, is, is this night different from all others, Paul? No, oh, I I don't know. I mean, I, I have <laughs> guess. You failed. I, what I meant was I wanted to ask Mary Jo that question. Like, oh, Mary Jo, why? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're Somebody the no, you're the server girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was funny when they announced that day, everybody was speculating it might be because the drivers are not finished. Um, but I'm trying to see. Microsoft did give an explanation that didn't really say anything. I'm trying to see where the, I put that. Um, <laughs> really? But, yeah. Uh, it didn't. It was like one of those things you're like, oh, that doesn't really tell me anything. OK. Um, but they're not they're not exactly specifying why it's going to be later. They just said it, it's uh, servers are of a different nature than client, and there's more integration involved. Blah 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 blah. blah. Okay. Blah. <laughs> so, That's it. but why why the delta between RTM in August and general availability of client in late October? Right. right. That seems like a lot um, of time too. Yeah. Uh, well, remember there was a blog post on Building Windows Eight blog about that where Sanofsky said um, it was it was going to be like the, the when something RTMs, it's the start of the RTM phase and they have to localize it into a million languages and they have to mm. get it to the hardware partners. They have to test it. They have to preload it, do the packaging. So it's all those like last things you do so before you actually I, I, I buy that. I, I don't buy the argument that RTM is not a single day or date, but uh, which is a claim they made back for at Windows 7 timeframe, if I recall correctly. Um, but you know, uh, did does like a guy at HP prod another guy with a stick and wake him up and say, "Hey, by the way, they just they just RTM Windows Eight. Maybe we should start working on this now." I mean, okay. it seems like they should be able to slipstream in the new build to the, you know, the images they've already created. Like, I it, it seems like this should happen. I don't build PCs, is what I'm saying. But if I did, yeah. it seems like I'd want to be ready for this. Mm -hmm. It's I'm just surprising. It's surprised it takes a lot. Maybe it's going to be another one of those. Um under promise and over deliver things like maybe it's not really going to take them that long and they're going to go surprise we're early oh maybe. god i hope not <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that's interesting okay mm, you know but the okay. one date we still don't have and the one piece of information that i got asked more times than anything at partner was when is the next build conference right and microsoft did not say that this week they did, still have not said a date a place have they even have uh, they said there is a next build conference they, well, they haven't called it build, but they said uh, at the start of this year when they killed Mix that there was going to be a developers conference this year. A lot, um, of, a lot of killing this year. A lot of death and destruction this year. But yeah, we, we don't know. And the rumor I keep hearing is October, but nobody knows. Nobody will say. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. No word. October. So maybe that would be where they would launch Windows 8. You know, every company does this. I know. I still don't understand. You know, Google... Uh, the, um, Apple and Microsoft, all of whom have developers conferences, are, never tell you, yeah. like, so you could plan it or anything. They just say uh, it's re it's always really close to the day. It's like, okay, yeah. get your tickets now. And where they're the most expensive, if you told us six months in advance, mm -hmm. we could get cheap airfare. I, I don't, I don't, I will just bat. And but it's not that's, just Microsoft. Uh, yeah, Everybody does that. Yeah, that's been yeah. the way things have been this year. Absolutely, it's bizarre. I don't get it. We just wanted to give you enough time to travel, Paul. You need to be in L.A. Tomorrow. In three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know yeah. I live in Boston, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a very odd thing. It is. Yeah. And you can't blame Microsoft because uh, Apple does it and Google does it, too. That doesn't, I, I can still blame Microsoft for Microsoft's own <laughs> Well, that's true. Okay, blame them. Hey, and good just, news, though. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, just one second ago, somebody on Twitter says, so when is the next build conference? <laughs> <laughs> tweet, tweet. Right. Yes, we do It's in know. October. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> tweet, tweet. We do not know. Well, but October would be a reasonable time, right? It would. It would make sure. sense yeah. in, in a way, right? And plus, and plus, what is this thing, right? Is it uh, is it Windows plus Windows Phone plus Web? Is it just Windows? Um, is it Windows 9? No, oh, God, no. Please, please, give us, uh, give us three months. <laughs> Of dealing with Windows 8. <laughs> so we it would be a from. Windows 8 conference. It would be about, as well as the other platforms well, I, possible. You know, for all of the, Microsoft's done a pretty good job, actually, of communicating what Windows 8 is, right? right. I mean, they. Oh, yeah, that's what the, I was saying. I, we know more about back this and, than any version of Windows in pre-release. Yeah, and, yeah. And, but people still don't know. So 
you can't reach people who aren't listening. So I think that they still need to have another big developer event for Windows 8 because there are just developers who weren't going to jump on board with this thing a year before the OS shipped. You know, but now that it's a real thing, there's a different class of developer who now start paying attention. So, and, and plus in the whole theme of reimagining Windows and how I'm totally on board with that, uh, it is absolutely true that all of these APIs and the way that you program for Windows 8 is completely different and new and everyone needs to learn it. Well, not every, I mean, everyone who's a developer who wants to do it would need to learn something new. So it's new information regardless of whether you knew about this stuff happening a year ago or not. So I, I, it's clearly necessary. Uh, good news for Microsoft, for Paul and others who uh, were using the <laughs> consumer preview. And there was this, you, you reported it, this crashing yep. issue. They fixed it. It was, it, we found out first of all, and I think you told us last week why it was happening. It was an Ivy Bridge incompatibility. Uh, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge, yeah. Oh, yep. Sandy Bridge too, okay. Yep. Yeah, there's been a lot of misunderstanding about this bug. Um, you know, some people have incorrectly described it as rare. It, it, it actually, if you have an Intel Sandy Bridge or Ivory Bridge computer, the bug is in your system. It's any just any at, computer made in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's arguably most computers running Windows 8. Right. But um, yeah, I give credit to Microsoft for fixing it because obviously it's, it, it's, pre, it's not present in Windows 8. It's not fair to say that. It's, it's, it's present in the Windows 8 release preview. They had actually fixed it internally in newer builds. So it was our, already going to be fixed in RTM. Um, but they did go back and supply a fix through Windows Update for it, which is fantastic. And that just means everyone's going to get it. So they provided a workaround first and then they put it in Windows Update. They said you said this last week I think it was a driver issue. Yeah, it's an Intel driver thing. So, um the theory because I had a workaround in, involving Hyper-V. If you know how Hyper-V works, it it actually kind of gets under Windows between Windows and the hardware. Mm -hmm. And so the theory is the reason that works when it does is that it either bypasses that driver or it just changes the way it works because it's you know now it's sitting between Windows and the hardware. Um it's, it wasn't a perfect fix. I, I, on my own daily use computer, which I still I still have not updated to that new fix, I used the Hyper-V workaround. My system only halted once since doing that. You know, so that and I realize any halt is bad, but compared to the way it was before, I had days where the system would come to a screeching halt. I think one day it was seven or eight times. I mean, it was really bad. Um, anyway, it's fixed, and so I think that's the important thing. So that's great. It's like a breath of fresh air. It's but, nice using a computer and not having to watch it reboot. Yeah. You know, especially when you're not planning for well, that. Well, that was, I think, the closest thing to a showstopper, right? I mean, uh, yeah. I, you know. Sure, sure. We're going to take and a I break. Were, Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I think there were people who stopped using it for that reason, too, based on the feedback I've gotten. Right. That it just became so problematic. They said, well, you know, I want to use this, but I can't. And it is rumored, although we won't know, that it, that's what happened to Stephen Sanofsky on stage. When he well, was it, um, so it. actually, it can't. That can't be what happened because he has a uh, Windows RT. This was Windows RT, and right. that doesn't have any Intel drivers. In it, so, so it isn't what happened. Um, yeah, but you know, I mean, it's, look, it's pre-release OS. I mean, there's no yeah surprise right. that this thing might crash. Bugs. That's why if it were if if it were ready, they it would be a release OS. Right. You still got a little you know work to do, but I guess we're getting close. That's good yeah, news. About two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> so maybe that was it. Maybe that was the last bug. Good news. Yeah. There are no more bugs. Hooray. Hooray. Uh, let us talk briefly about uh, Go to My PC and the folks at Citrix, and then we'll get back. Mary Jo Foley. It, it, by the way, working great now, Mary Jo. That, they They fixed great. it. Knock on wood. Uh, whatever they did under there uh, <laughs> made it all work better. Uh, she's in uh, Toronto for uh, the Microsoft Partner show in fact we'll have a roundup of what happened in toronto in just a little bit paul therott at his usual home headquarters the fortress of solitude in beautiful Dedham, massachusetts <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> more of windows weekly in a bit but first yeah. let's talk about getting to your pc from toronto or your fortress of solitude or anywhere go to my pc is the simply put the best remote access software and this is the time you need to know because it's time for vacations it's summertime it's time to go home early it's time to spend time at the pool don't let another summer pass you by because you're chained to your desktop at work you could still get work done enjoy the season with go to my pc by the way they should rename it because it lets you access a pc or a mac 
from a laptop, an iPad, or even an iPhone. So really, I don't, you know, we got to come up with a new name for this thing. It is the ultimate in remote access. It's from Citrix. You should know that name. If you're a Windows user, the name Citrix should ring a bell. These are the remote access people. With Go to My PC, easy to use. You don't have to punch holes in firewalls. It uses NAT traversal, so it just configures itself automatically. It's SSL, so it's secure. In fact, I know there are a lot of people who use Go to My PC as they travel as, in, in effect, a VPN back to your office computer so you could be at a coffee shop at an insecure network at a hotel, which is the most insecure of all. You ever, you ever plug into an Ethernet jack at the hotel and you could see everybody's computers in the hotel? Mm -hmm. They're all shared. Oh, that's nice. Uh, well, believe me, this is why you want something like Go to My PC. You can fire it up. Surf to your office computer with 128-bit SSL, completely, cl completely, completely secure. Surf the net from there. We can run any program and uh, send and receive email, access any document, even access network resources from your desktop, no matter where you are. At a at an insecure hotel on vacation, by the pool, at the beach, you could be you sitting at the beach with your iPad, getting work done. Just pretend you're playing Angry Birds. Go to my PC, easy to use, easy to set up, totally secure and free for the next 30 days. Are you going on a vacation this month? That's the time. Visit go to my PC.com, use our promo code Windows, and you'll get it free for 30 days. So go to my PC.com, there's the try it free button there. Click that, and the promo code is Windows. For the summertime or anytime, this is the best remote access software out there. Go to my PC.com. So, Mary Jo, you having a good time in Toronto? Is the, is the conference over, the partner conference over, or is it still going on? It ends tonight. Okay. Um, With a yeah, beer bash. Been all week. <laughs> the first thing I did when I came to Toronto, even before I went and got my binder and all, I went to the Steam Whistle Brewery. That was oh, my yeah. first stop. <laughs> good, good stop. How'd you like it? It was awesome. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Yeah, so um, it's been a really busy partner conference. Um, there's just been... A lot of announcements. Um, Bomber was on day one. He announced the dates that we already talked about. And um, they had the usual Kevin Turner, as we talked about last week. He was, did his usual bashing of Apple and Google and VMware and Oracle. So those were all predictable. Uh, but I, I thought I'd give, bring out a few other things that they uh, talked about this week because there were a lot of interesting little tidbits. And um, one thing was we saw a few demos um, this week of Windows RT PCs. Um, when Tammy Reller was on stage, she was demoing a um, prototype Windows RT device from Qualcomm. And there are a few other demos where they casually mentioned, hey, we're running a Windows RT device um, as part of this demo. So that was kind of cool because they there really haven't been that many demos of those devices in, in real demos. You know, we still didn't get to play with them. We didn't get to see a Surface. Um, maybe there were some here behind closed doors. They didn't even, we didn't get that's to surprising see. that they didn't have any Surfaces. No. No, I thought I thought we might get to see him or play around with them. I, I joked on Twitter. I said maybe we're all going to have one under our seat. It'll be an Oprah moment, and we'll all be like, uh -oh. "You all go good luck." <laughs> I know. I was just wishful thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, Didn't feel like Surface was that close to done, but I thought maybe no. at the partner conference at least they'd sh they'd have a few. I know, I thought so too. So I didn't, I didn't see any if there were any. Yeah. Um, they they emphasized again, Windows XP is really, really, really going to be dead in April 2014. Because <laughs> I think <laughs> it's, it's I'm not dead yet. No, you're, you're really, dead. really dead. <laughs> you're dead. You're so dead. So yeah. Um, cause, because some people kept thinking, you know what, maybe they're going to accept life on it one more time, right? Like maybe they're going to say, all right, one more, you know, two more years. But they said at the conference, if you're hoping for that, no. And we're not even going to do any security updates after April 8th, 2014 for XP. So if you're running it, wow. then you're, you're on your own. And Steve that's, Gibson's that's, not going to be happy. He's not going to be happy. He's still using at it. All. Is but, he really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Steve is very slow to uh, – because his, his policy as a security guy is, um, you know, the stuff that's been around the longest is the safest. It's been patched. It's been tested. It's, you know, tri t trial by fire. But I think – Truthfully, Windows 7 is going to be the platform for laggards going forward, yeah. right? That's the. I, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I'll be, I'll be one of those laggards until I make a commitment on Windows 8. <laughs> I, you know, Steve says he loves XP, and I talk to people who say, oh, XP is so fast. I love 7 to me is so much better than anything yeah. prior. It yeah. Just, I don't, you know, and it's secure. It's locked down. They've patched, the, you know, the, the, the yeah. bugs. And, I yeah. don't know, anyway. Yeah, a lot of a lot of partners who were here thought we were going to 
yet to hear an update on the Windows, uh, uh, sorry, on the Office 2013 beta. Because right. there's a public beta due like, right around now. Everyone's like, oh, I'm in the partner. But they didn't. And they didn't even mention it. Um, I, everybody's here saying it's going to still be out in July. A couple more weeks left for them to drop that possibly. So that was one thing they weren't too keen on. And the other one they weren't too keen on was uh, there, were, there was, uh, we talked about this on the show last week, they killed uh, the the server on-premises product. That's one of the things that's going to be going away. And Microsoft has a lot of partners who are incredibly loyal to that product, and they sell a lot of it. And they are not too happy. And I heard it from a lot of them here about not being happy. They they feel like their customers aren't ready to go to the cloud, and Microsoft's advising them to use Windows Server essentials, which is this hybrid cloud and on-premises server. But they said, no, nah, my customers don't want that. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens there and if Microsoft can get them back in the fold or not back in the fold. Yeah. I, th this is this is a tough one because the the partners that she's referring to, of course, make their living currently mostly selling on-premises servers to these companies and then supporting them, right? right? And so as Microsoft moves to the cloud and then also takes away, in the in the case of Windows Server, some of the products they had been selling for years and years, of course, these partners are getting a little edgy, and um, I wonder sometimes. I don't. I, and I don't mean this in a sarcastic sense, but I wonder sometimes if these comments about my customers not being ready is more like the partners are the ones not ready, and that maybe it's the partners not doing a great job of educating their own customers about, you know, the differences between on-prem and, and cloud, and, and where you know either one could be beneficial depending on, you know, how you roll it out. Uh, the other issue, of course, is that. Microsoft's cloud services are kind of a tough sell from a partner standpoint because now Microsoft is selling these things directly to customers. And so some of the changes they announced at uh, the partner conference involved offering uh, the ability of partners to offer Office 365 directly uh, to their customers, yeah. you know, by bypassing that problem. Yeah, that got, that got like a standing ovation almost at the partner <laughs> show because... You know, yeah. before partners haven't been able to have customers direct bill with them, and they ha had to go through Microsoft. And partners were like, "What? You know, we this is this is my customer, not Microsoft's customer, and I yep. I want to be able to direct bill." So they announced the next year there's going to be this program called Office 365 Open. So if you're a partner selling it, you get to direct bill, and that was a very very popular announcement here. Yeah, and maybe that will solve these problems because before Office 365 was one of those things you could argue pretty effectively that it was a good thing for customers. But from the partner's perspective, it's like, why would I, what, why am I selling them on this thing exactly? They're going to start paying you for the service? You know, not me. And, and I, I think that was the central issue, uh, you know, between the problems that these guys had with Microsoft and uh, with regards to Office 365. Uh, the other fun thing that happened at Partner was I went to the U.S. Uh, partner party on, uh, I think it was Tuesday night. I met so many Windows Weekly listeners there. Everybody was oh, coming yeah. up and going, I'm a Windows Weekly listener. I oh, love your show. Yay. Everybody wanted to know where Paul was. That was like, Aww. is Paul here too? You two are married, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to go fight the... Nazis on the moon. That's like an <laughs> <laughs> We're married now, right? So right? I actually I would have come, yeah. and uh, Toronto's close, but I had to finish. I was actually finishing the book. and um, Is it done? Yeah, I was going to discuss that a little later. Oh, but, um, yeah, save it. Yeah, no, we'll, save get, it. we'll, we'll get to that. It. But, uh, That's it's, great. Um, I'm glad to hear it, though. But yeah, I wanted to, I've never been to the partner conference, and I've always wanted to go, and it, always, it seems like a great event. Who, when you say partners, are we talking, is it... Uh, who who is that? Is that like the the VARs? Is it like the OEMs? Is it like the MCSEs or what is the new one? The MCISP or whatever it is. Yeah, it's a it's so resellers, systems integrators, telco partners, oh, OEMs, everybody. Oh, wow. everybody. It's like that's there's sixteen thousand people here. Oh, yeah, it's oh, a big show. Golly, yeah, what yeah. fun! Developers, a lot of developers. Developers are here. too, huh? Yep. I got to be on the Developers Cube show that Microsoft does. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really great because you get to talk to a huge cross-section of people at this thing. <laughs> wow. I didn't yeah. realize it was such a big deal. It is. Why yeah. are they having it in a foreign big. land? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> tax purposes, Leo. <laughs> Let's, it's a tax shelter. We'll all see you in the Canary Islands next year. <laughs> oh, man, that'd yeah, be exactly. awesome, wouldn't it? Do, do, is it move around or is it always in Toronto? Yeah. Or? 
Next year is in Houston. Oh, not in the summer, please. In the summer, yeah. yeah. Oh, July, I know. Well, Toronto yeah. ain't exactly chilly. No, it's been a nice week, but <laughs> has it? <weather>. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was, yeah. but it was so bad last week in New York. Anything would be better than. Historically, sure. though, the partner conference has always been a great show for announcements. For whatever reason, it's it's uh, it's it's often had some really good information. And I mean, this week it was mostly around the schedule for Windows Eight and Windows Server, and that's fine, you know. But but sometimes it's there's been some really revealing stuff there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it seems like it's worth going to. Well, one thing yeah, they definitely. announced is going to be a, uh, a Microsoft store in Boston in a couple of months. I know. That's exciting. I'm going to be home just in time to see it open, too. I might go stand in line like a goof. You'll be the but only uh, one, Paul. Come on. You think people stand in line for that? I do. Yes, I do. I really? Do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can't wait to see what's new at Microsoft. <clears throat> I know. Now, mostly because they well, give away tickets to concerts. Oh, okay. I'm just, I, I have my fingers crossed for Katy Perry, Leo, but we'll see how that works. <laughs> Baby, you're a firework. <laughs> right. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky I know the name Kenny Perry. So, yeah, August 24th, maybe? It's it's sometime late in August. Yeah, exciting. Yeah, and they announced um, stores coming up to Toronto, which made the home mm -hmm. crowd happy. And Puerto Rico is getting a store. Um, <laughs> yep. I'm like, but still nothing on New York. Okay. No New York well, City stores. There's no New York. Wait a minute. There's no, no Microsoft there's, store in the Big Apple. There's one, there's one in New Jersey. That's sort oh, of Oh, that's close. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> it's over the, hey, if you have to go over a bridge, it doesn't count. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. But they did say, um, and I think this is what we're going to get this holiday season, is um, pop-up stores are going to be in places ah. where they don't have real stores. So hopefully, you know, since It'll they're going to sell uh, surfaces uh, Like a there. Microsoft store next to a pop-up Cracker Barrel? <laughs> or what exactly. it, no, what was, the, those, uh, yeah. what was that cheese shop that always that comes to the mall in the, at Christmas time? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the smoky uh, cheese and the, and the beef yeah, stick. It, with, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Summer sausage. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Microsoft Surface Tablet. Hickory Farms. Right there. Hickory yeah. Farms. Thank you, good Hickory sound. Farms. Hickory Thank Farms. Oh, lordy, lordy. We used to have one of those in the middle of the Dedham Mall permanently. It was a barn, and they actually had hay in the <laughs> corners. That's so if you have to puke after eating a summer sausage. <laughs> yeah. Ish. It was the centerpiece of the Dedham Mall when I was a kid. Those summer sausages are absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, don't get me on a tangent, but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Governor it's Christie, too, Governor like Christie is happy, right? And you don't want, frankly, you don't want to anger Governor Christie. <laughs> God, the New Jersey governor, he sure. uh, he right. just he goes off on the. He'll I send Snooky after. He will. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Wisconsin guy, where where the summer sausage originated, says they're not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, right. Not I, Hickory Hickory Farms is the equivalent of that, like all night pancake shop that's open. Like, so when you're drunk, you kind of end up there. It's right. not necessarily no where one you chooses want to be, it. Yeah, yeah. No it's one... better than nothing. <laughs> but you're in a mall, and right. uh, they've got the smoked. They got the smoked cheese, which is another the smoked gouda. Uh, yeah. yeah, smoke. Not 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 a felicitous no. combination. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a flimsy, flabby cheese, really, with probably like sprayed with smoke flavoring or something. You know? uh, oh. The good old days. <laughs> Let's see what else was announced at the uh, fabulous. <laughs> yes, partner. You know what Summers. wasn't announced was Office. What? Yep. What are they? Gonna, why are they keeping yep. this a secret? What is? What is going on here? I don't know. I think it's soon. But, you know, because, cause, okay, ne what happens next week is there's Microsoft's huge internal sales conference called MGX. This is like their whole sales force goes to this thing. It's in Atlanta this year. So mm -hmm. they always try to save a few things to have, you know, be the big rah-rah announcements there. And it's Microsoft earnings, too. So I think they're save trying to save up some more fire for uh, the coming couple weeks. What's What's coming uh, in the coming couple of weeks? Do they have another thing? Hey. Well, thing, we yeah. hope we're hoping Office Beta. I mean, the rumor is Office Office Beta is like pro yeah, possibly so the, next, into all the next Office right? version. Yeah, and, right. and all the associated products too. I mean, maybe there'll yep. be something around mobile device versions of Office, uh, Office servers. Uh, lots of questions. Yeah, they should around, be all together, uh, right? I mean, they they've said all these things are in lockstep. So next mm -hmm. versions of Exchange and SharePoint and Link and the services like Office 365. So everything is going to get revved all at the same time. It's a really big other rollout for them besides Windows. Right. 
which is good because I need something to turn my attention to. I've been engorged like a tick on the side. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why I, 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 I can't get that image out of my nasty. mind. That was nasty. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, think of something nice. Uh, Cinnabon. Uh, right. Summer sausage and a Cracker Cinnabon. barrel. Uh, <laughs> smoke Gouda. <laughs> yeah. How about Office for iOS? Any word about that? I We'll see. I mean, that's, you that's know, I'm it's curious. It's all the same. It's all a part and parcel of the same thing, I would guess. Yes. Yeah. I, we're well, almost at the they're... point now where I almost wish they would not do it, right? Just to yeah. have that as some kind of competitive advantage. But I, it, I, it seems like they shouldn't. They should have it on Surface. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the advantage of Surface, is it not? I, I, that's not the way they do things. I, I'm, I, I yeah. do expect, and I've heard, I've certainly heard things about it. I, I do sort of expect to see it eventually. Yeah, I think it's going to come after, um, my guess would be, as, it's going to come after Office for Windows devices, just to give themselves a little head start. Right. But I think it right. is going to come. I think there is going to be Office for iOS and maybe Office for Android coming um, not so far away, maybe like early next year or something. Office for Android? That's the first I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah, I think uh, Android. I've seen a couple reports of folks saying and for yeah. Android devices. Yeah. Um, well, until yes. Android tablets took off or started, you know, being, uh, I shouldn't say. How, take how do off. we say this? How do we say this? <laughs> until they stopped being such crap, uh, mm -hmm. it made no sense to do it. But now I think with the Nexus sure. Seven, uh, mm -hmm. maybe there's maybe you could start saying, oh, uh, you know, we expect something to happen in the uh, tablet space on Android. Maybe. I don't yeah. Know. They were really awful until then. And the, well, it wasn't even that. They would just nobody was buying them. You know, there was no market. Yeah, it was it was both actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's why no. It was, was a, a chicken and an egg effect right. to that. But exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like this. KT unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? Yeah. So that's a uh, Kevin Turner, the CEO of Microsoft. He. Uh, you have to say KTM plug because this guy gets up and this is his annual rant. He just gets up on the stage and he starts taking apart every Microsoft competitor and all kinds of like claims. And he, he the idea is to fire up the partners, but man, he gets all the competitors like totally riled up because he he throws out numbers. You're like, who? How can you even prove that number? Can you even prove that number? <laughs> Doesn't matter. He throws them out there. It's no, my so, number, and I'm sticking with it. Exactly. Yeah. Part, but the partners love it. They're all they get all fired up and yell and who. I, I was thinking about that the other day. I mean, that's what Balmer also does, right? That's what he's so good at. And yeah. I was thinking, um, and the reason I was, I was thinking about it in, con in context of Steve Jobs and Apple, I think Steve Jobs did that at Apple. He would, in private Apple, you know, all hands meetings, he would say the most vicious anti-competitive stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Those, you know, I mean, there's the famous one about Google. They're stealing our stuff. The, and, it, and, you know, it's really probably not for public consumption so much as to just get everybody excited. Yeah, fired up. Fire up. And yes. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think Steve Ballmer particularly is very good at that. And apparently KT. I know, I was, yeah, I was so disappointed, though. At Bal what they did with Balmer this year at the Partners Show, I think they've done this before. They had him sit, do a sit-down Q&A with someone oh, um, instead of letting him just go wild. And it's just kind of a letdown because you think, oh, I'm going to get Steve Balmer, like, running around doing the monkey boy <laughs> Monkey <games."> boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's I think he, I, yeah. He's become tired like better that. when he's excited, you know. I know, me too. And the, the microphone went out at one point oh. and – you know, this is a gigantic arena. This is like mm -hmm. a sports arena. Mm -hmm. And he, he just started yelling. Um, Sorry. He didn't even need we, a microphone. We could hear him. You could hear him? 18,000 people yeah. could hear him yeah. in the, <laughs> without a microphone. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I remember, you know, the one he did, they did in the Seattle uh, Superdome or whatever, where he fa somebody was taking pictures of him with an iPhone. He picked it up and took it away from the guy. Yeah. That's yeah. what you have to do, I think, yep. at, at events like this, not in, in public probably. Right. But when you're t when you're preaching to the converted, right. you you can't just say we're good, aren't we? You gotta say we're the best. Those guys suck. Yep. <sighs> it's a little bit like um, war. the Nuremberg rallies, exactly. really. It's like but war. Sure, it's exactly what it is. They need more torches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. More. Yeah. More flags. They so. should have. They should have these events in the open air at night with giant banners yeah. and torches. Yeah, I was we'll watching. Get, we'll get there. I was watching as part of. I guess I mentioned this before. As part of um, reading this book, I started watching on Netflix, and they have uh, the Triumph of the Will that uh, Liney Rice. Yes, yeah, they do the whole thing. The yeah. Nuremberg Rally. Oh my gosh! 
it, a lot of it is just it's just like the beginning is the plane flying into the city. Yeah, and it's forever just and ever. Yeah, just for a kind of a historical. This is what it looked like. You know, amazing. Yeah, maybe. Um, Microsoft could say, you know, like, the triumph of the surface or something and just do a... <laughs> the <laughs> they yeah, need a the filmmaker. Tri the tri the they triumph need of a the film. filmmaker, please. We're going to take a break. Mary Jo Foley, Paul Thorat. Do you have anything, any any more stuff from Toronto? Toronto. Um, just the, uh, the next item on our list is also from Toronto. We'll save it, and we'll do it in a moment. The next item on our list. There's a tease. <laughs> Coming up. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss the next item. On our list. <laughs> I could have made it a little sexier. I didn't know I was doing this. No, You've got that's, lists. that's my job. <laughs> that's my. I should. I'm the one who's supposed to sex it up. <laughs> the next item on our list. Next. <laughs> Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat, Mary Joe Foley. Mary Joe, of course, blogs at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And if you want to follow this fabulous partner summit, follow Mary Joe. Allaboutmicrosoft.com. Paul Thorat. Is at the uh, super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. And soon, back on the bookstore shelves. We'll talk about that in a moment, too. But first, a word from Ford. This is, in a way, I and mean, I think Ford actually is very hand in hand with Microsoft. I asked them um, if they could, I asked uh, uh, Paul Macarenas, the um, CTO of Ford, I said, are, they, are you going to continue your relationship with Microsoft? Because Ford Sync and all of that is. Built on Microsoft. Is it Microsoft Car? Is that what it's called? Or Auto? Microsoft Car, I think. The car platform. And he said, yeah, we're very happy with it. Uh, we really like it as a base platform. Of course, they've added a lot on top of it with Sync and My Ford Touch. Um, and they, uh, and I, it was interesting. They do an app now, the My Ford mobile app, which also uses something called the value charging feature powered by Microsoft. So these are two companies very much uh, going hand in hand. And that's not so much, so much of a surprise to... Uh, here, the CTO of Ford, for instance, say, we consider our cars a platform, much like uh, you would say Windows is a platform. He said, we, you know, uh, cars don't iterate as fast as software. It's a durable good. People will have this for years. So what we want to build into it is the capability to enhance it as you own the car. And that's where the app comes in. Um, they've got a they've got an API as with any platform you need an API so developers can write software for it and they've got an API for Ford Sync that's called AppLink and then they've got a kind of a demo uh, app called My Ford Mobile that's a, both a website and an app which you can get right now on the 2012 Ford Focus Electric available at Ford dealers right now. Uh, the app is very interesting. Uh, it, it makes sense on an electric because it does things like tell you the state of charge of the car. It tells you where there are charging stations as you travel around. It it's, it's works on Android, Apple, and BlackBerry. It also tells you where your car is, There's, <laughs> which is kind of cool. There's a website that goes with it with leaderboards so you can compete against others to see who saved the most CO2, for instance, or saved the most money. Um it even will let you do things like pro you. This is the value charging feature. Program your car and your charger. I guess it's. I'm not sure which. I guess it's the car to only uh, uh, charge its battery at the lowest utility rates. Then there's an API, and the utilities provide that information to the uh, app. Very interesting stuff. Go times pr lets you precondition your vehicle's temperature before you leave to conserve energy. You can monitor charging, get alerts. Find charging stations. Plan your drive for the most eco-friendly route. You can share and learn smart driving tips in the forums. That's in the My Ford Mobile website. Mention, uh, monitor how far you drive and how much CO2 you save. All of that with the My Ford Mobile app. So here's a here's the deal. You, now you can test drive the app, but you have to do it by test driving the car. Go to your 2012 Ford Focus dealer. Any EV certified Ford dealer will have it. And bring your phone and try the app. And you can learn more about all of these neat technologies. And the idea of a car as or your vehicle as a platform for for updates and so forth at the Ford website, Ford.com slash technology. That's the that's the site for geeks. Ford.com slash technology. Technology is a big part of what Ford is up to. Very neat stuff. Paul Thorat, Mary Joe Foley, I'm Leo Laporte. We're talking about well, a lot, all things Microsoft, as we always do on the show. And uh, more news from the Partner uh, Conference. Mary Jo, 
Yes. So the, um, you probably saw Microsoft announce they were buying a company called Perceptive Pixel. Um, yeah, what is that? There's so many pixels. I know. There's so many things named Pixel at Microsoft right now. It's kind of confusing. But um, so percept Perceptive Pixel. Per, blah, perceptive Pete, just call him pee pee. Call him pee pee. <laughs> pee pee. Pee pee. pee, -pee. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make, just say pee pee. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they, make large, they make large screen displays, like wall mountable ah. displays. And um, what's cool about them is they're multi touch displays that you can also use with a pen if you want. And their niche has been, they're a very good complement to Microsoft Office. So people use this like as a collaboration whiteboarding thing or something to take notes or almost like a classroom thing. You could use it in place of a blackboard, a very high tech and very expensive blackboard. Um, they, their displays are really high end, like they go for $80,000 a piece. And so Microsoft bought them and they said they bought them um, to actually fold them into the office division, which is kind of interesting, and that they're going to be working to figure out how to bring the price down on these. So either they're going to make them themselves, which would be Microsoft making even more hardware branded as Microsoft hardware, or they're going to take this technology and license it to other OEMs and they're going to make the displays with this technology inside. The thing that to me is interesting about per Perceptive Pixel is it's, it's uh, what is his name? Jeff Hahn? It's uh, Jeff, Hahn. Jeff Hahn's yep. company. So many of you first, many of us first saw multi-touch displayed. Remember that TED talk about mm -hmm. five or six years ago where the guy was yep. doing all of this? On a multi-touch, yep. and he was—I think—I don't think—I don't know if you could say he invented it, but he certainly was the guy who first showed us multi-touch. So I'm wondering if there's also some patents that Microsoft's getting Me with too. Pix the Perceptive yeah. Pixel. This is—you're basically hiring the guy who first, if not invented, first demonstrated multi-touch. Right. And I think I, I'm that's sure they're huge. Getting patents. Yeah. Yeah. I think definitely. that's that may have a lot to do with it. And you've got to wonder, um, you know, how much it has to do with fighting other multi-touch manufacturers mm -hmm. if you know what i mean well well you know the scuttlebutt here at the show was the group that was the most surprised by this announcement was microsoft's own multi-touch group called <laughs> pixel sense um, uh -huh. that they didn't know this was going to happen and they were kind of surprised when they heard microsoft bought a company that had been their competitor well but you know and the other thing um that I that I wonder. I, I had heard when Jeff Hahn did this demo that there, and, and, and you know, I remember when Apple announced the iPad uh, about four, three, four years later. I said, "Well, wait a minute. Apple doesn't own this. Jeff Hahn owns it." But I then was told, I think by others, no, Jeff doesn't have. There's nobody has a patent on this. This stuff is old technology. CMU developed it. Other people developed it. So nobody can own multi-touch. I don't know if that's true though. You've got to think. Uh, if any company has patents on this, it'll be Perceptive Pixel. Mm -hmm. You would think so. Very interesting. And they're, they've always done big displays. Basically, what he showed yeah. was like a surface. Yeah. And, you know, Steve Ballmer has had their display um, in his office since February, they told me. And uh. so people have gone into his office and seen it, but they thought it was, a lot of people thought it was the old Microsoft Surface. They didn't know it was Perceptive Pixels technology. Which oh, is interesting. Kind of interesting. Yeah. But it did. I mean, it had, every, it had pinch. It had uh, all of the moves. Um, that we now have later come to associate with, um, and it was it, and, and in fact, that's what Perceptive Pixel did. They did uh, CNN used it. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people used yep. that. It was always a big. It was always big. It was never small. So that's really intriguing. Yes, that they very that they hired them. I find that very uh, very interesting. Or f bought them. How do we know how much for it was? It was for no. They won't say. Mm. Let me see. They're I think I saying. have. Um, I think I have, I found Jeff's TED Talk here, if I can. I to be here today because I'm about to show you some stuff that's just ready to come This was 2006. Web, and this is the first time I'm anybody really had seen this gesture-based really, really control. Change, really February 2006. We interact with machines from this point on. Now, um, Boy, was he this right, is a, too. We project the drafting table. It's about 36 inches wide, and it's equipped with a multi-touch sensor. Now, normal touch sensors that you see, like on your kiosk or interactive whiteboards, can only register kind of one point of contact at a time. This thing allows you to have 
multiple points at the same time. They can use <laughs> this, both my I, hands. I don't know if you remember seeing this, options. you know, six years ago. This was mind-boggling. Go right up and use all ten mm -hmm. fingers if I wanted to. This is like the Engelbart like mouse demo. It is. Now, this, this is, I think, going to end up being uh, historic. So the fact new, that this guy is now like working for Microsoft, I think, is very years. interesting. However, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some patent lawsuits come out of that. So you don't think this is about Microsoft selling $80,000 touchscreen <laughs> computers or whatever. Mm, yeah, well, it's the new Surface. I, I think there's something to be said for we now have the guy who invented this, or at least that's the question. How much of this did he invent? It's certainly prior art that somebody points out in the chat room. You know, 2006 predates anything Apple did. So if it may be purely defensive, maybe that's all it is. Maybe you know, hey, look, we got you know, we got the prior yeah. art to prove it. And he works sure. here. At least for a while. Um, well, that's the problem, isn't it? You get a guy like that, yeah. you get yeah, him yeah. for a year or whatever. I'm not, it depends if they locked him up. Uh, Azure Services. I think Mary Jo is the one to talk about Azure. Yes. Yeah, good guess. Uh, <laughs> good guess. <laughs> She's the only one who knows how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. So this another yet another Toronto announcement that was um, pretty interesting and didn't get a lot of play, but... You know, Microsoft keeps saying, we're everything we do in the cloud, we want to do on premises too. So, everything we develop for Windows Azure, we want to bring it back to Windows Server. Oh, Pretty that's much huge. Everything. That's huge. Because that gives it people is. confidence. When you see these, you know, uh, what was it last week? Amazon goes down and Netflix yep. is off the air. I mean, all yep. Instagram, Spotify, suddenly down. And that really kind of brings home you ought to have a copy uh, locally. Exactly. You might, and so, you might just want to have a copy of that stuff. You might want to have one of these at home, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, so they, they're they taking, you know, they announced recently that they're you're going to let you host Linux and Windows Server in a virtual machine. They're going to bring that technology over to Windows Server. They're going to bring over what's called Azure Websites to Windows Server and a whole new service management portal and framework and API also bring, being brought from the cloud over to Windows Server. So the people who love this announcement the most in Toronto are the hosting companies like GoDaddy, Rackspace, yeah. because they want to be able to offer these kind of capabilities oh. to their users. Oh, like right now, Azure is only from Microsoft, but if you, you're, they're bringing more and more of <sighs> Azure stuff to Windows so that people who host Windows in their data center could can now that. have that for their customers. And does the license allow that, that you could then resell it? does. It? Yep. Very interesting. It's more than just Very saying, well, I have Azure in the cloud, but I also have Azure as a backup. It's also saying we could do services. Exactly. Ourselves. Yep. That is fascinating. It was. I think I think on your new enterprise show, they're going to like that one too. I <laughs> bet you Padre SJ is all excited about showing yep. off how to do that. Yep. Uh, and this one's definitely for Paul. Bing Fund. <laughs> wow. Actually, I, I don't even know what this is. I just so. like saying the word Bing Fund. Bing. Bing. Fund. Bing Fund. Is this yeah, another I, MJ? I another one from Mary it Jo? Is. I know. You've I, been busy. I, lo I loaded the show notes in my favor this week. <laughs> <laughs> as well, I, I, right, I, which I is like a actually a nice way of saying I didn't do much at Paul all. Paul just took his way. He, he was busy well, on, uh, yeah. doing something else. I think Paul was only writing his book, wasn't yeah. he? Was doing I, was a little, I was a little busy, but a little I preoccupied. And you were at the partner conference, Mary Jo. So. I was. I was. Yep. Yeah, so this, this isn't one from the partner conference, but um, it was one that leaked out right before the partner conference. I wrote about it on Sunday. And so what Microsoft is doing is reaching out to startups. So if you're a startup and you're watching Windows Weekly, you may want to check this out although only U.S. startups to start. Um, and they're looking for companies who are building online or mobile kinds of applications. And what they're offering you is they're going to act as an angel investor in your company. Um, they're going to help you build your app. They're going to subsidize um, your use of some of their APIs, their Microsoft research technologies. And they're going to basically hold your hand, help you design the app and kind of get you started up. So it's like they're being uh, both an incubator and an angel fund in one. And it's called the Bing Fund, and it just launched right before Windows Weekly began today. That's neat. So, Would yes. you go up to Redmond, as these, as these incubators often do? They say, like, why Combinator? You have to come to San Francisco. and It's startup class as much as anything, as much as yeah. money. Is that how they're yep. going to do if it? You're, if you're local, they're saying come and work with us in our own place. And if you're in the Seattle area, we want you to come to our co workspace in Bellevue and that's work great. with us. I think that's yeah. very valuable. Every every uh, 
Every startup I talk to, every founder I talk to says that, uh, often that these are the best ways to uh, get into this. And they get, and a, that, they get a small stake in it. They do. Yeah. They do. And not, not usually one huge. of the guys you'll get to work with if you do this is Raul Sood, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, he was the founder of Voodoo P that got bought by, by HP. Right. And then he joined Microsoft. And froze oh. solid. I froze solid. You froze oh. solid. Voodoo, Voodoo, he was uh, found in Voodoo yes. PC. And then Remember German. Voodoo PC? Was a, it was a computer manufacturer. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, were, they became part of HP. That, part yeah, of HP. it was a gaming, yeah. it was gaming uh, platform, I think. Yeah? Yep. yep. Cool. Uh, let's see here. We got, uh, is that, that pretty much covers our news. You want to uh, want to get to our picks and tips and all of that yeah, stuff? Yeah, but before we do, uh, Mary Jo, do you need to leave soon? I do. What, I do need, need to leave so now wanna, or when? Do you want to do your picks before you go? Uh, do you want to do yours first? Sign up. Yeah. Do you okay. guys mind? Go, go for yeah. it. Go for it. Enterprise Pick of the Week, I decided to make Office 365 the Enterprise Pick of the Week because we already talked about, you know, this open program where they're going to let partners bill directly now. And there's um, – I haven't written about this yet, but there's also something coming, I believe, called the Office 365 Fully Packaged Product. This may be something out next year. <laughs> what the hell is that? FPP. Well, listen to what this is. It's kind of weird and, and intriguing. You know how um, you can get an Xbox Live points card now at retail? Yeah, yeah. This would be an Office 365 card oh. sold at retail. What a great gift for uh, yeah. <laughs> mom or and dad. The stocking, and the <laughs> stocking stuffer. Holiday season. I'm giving you, you six know? butts of Office 365. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I'm, I'm like, okay, let's see how that goes. Uh, that's, as, that's as much about it as I know. And, um, <laughs> that's bizarre. I'm, bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre. A bizarre enterprise pick of the week. <laughs> yeah. FPP. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, code name pick of the week is Katal. And this is funny because this I don't know why they picked this as a code name but or even what Katal is or means or the significance but it was a code name I heard maybe like a year ago and I I never knew what it was and I found out this week that remember when we were talking about the um, enterprise services coming over from Azure to Windows Server the two parts uh, that are the service pieces the um service framework and the management service portal those two things were code named Katal so I heard about this I don't know, like literally like a year ago. So now I found out t this week is when Katal has finally blossomed hmm. into the world. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Katal has so blossomed. Are, it Katal, like a, I don't know. Like what is skin, Katal? Skin condition. It must be a mountain. <laughs> it's, a, it's supposed to sound like a flower, oh. not a skin condition. <laughs> K-A-T-A-L. Does anyone know it what up. it is? Well, I think it's K-A-T-A-L. It is the... Uh, the uh, no, that can't be right. It's the it's a unit of catalytic activity. <laughs> oh, jeez, that, uh, that that that's one meaning anyway of catal. Yeah. I thought uh, you were referring to the flower or the uh, what you call it. It's said? a it was, unit uh, of measurement. <clears throat> blossoming, I think. Blossoming. Said. Blossoming. Uh, I think I just use the word blossoming. But. No, I mean, but in other words, it, like not blossoming like a skin disease, but blossoming. Oh, no. yeah. like a you flower. Know, it is the international standard. There is no other definition for the uh, derived unit of catalytic activity. That's awesome. No, <laughs> I can't find any other definition. K-A-T-A-L. I've got to find somebody out there in the world who knows why Katal was the code name. Well, and we'll it's, report it's a, back. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's catalytic. It's it's gonna it's, it's gonna it's gonna catalyze. Oh wait a minute. I'm sorry. There is also a village in Iran named. I Katal. bet that's it. Also, a it, stew of meat, vegetables, or potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a. Ge I was like, it has to be a geographic code name. So. But no, they're not going to name it after an Iranian village. I'm sorry, that can't be sure it they either. Will. What they might? I don't they think might. Iran is beloved right now by. Uh, no, but they just like to pick obscure places, you know. Oh, this is an obscure place. It's obscure. <laughs> it's at uh, 33 uh, East, 43, <laughs> 33 <laughs> North, and 47 East. Hiking. Yeah. It's in the uh, province of Loristan. <laughs> That's not it. It could be it. I'm telling you. Uh, I prefer it as the unit of catalytic activity. Yes. Maybe I think that's that, you know, express, that. it's not used to, by the way, commonly uh, misunderstood, it is not used to express the rate of reaction. That is in moles per liter per second. Rather, it is used to express catalytic activity. It's a property of the catalyst itself. 
Just want to make that clear. So otherwise, okay. we'll get we'll get <laughs> limits, uh, le- letters, limits. We get limit. We'll get lemmings in the mail from chemistry. It's yes, pronounced catel. Oh, it's catel. Uh, well, if it's a catalytic activity unit, mm. and that's mm. that's catel. Not sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's our that's our mystery code name of the week. <laughs> that is very mysterious. <laughs> wow, that is very yes. interesting. Okay. Yes. So I have to zip off to go to the airport now. Fly away, Mary Jo. Fly yes, away. Thank you for putting up with my bad sound. Not at all. Thank you, know you to what? Microsoft for helping. Yes, <laughs> the, and it got much better, so we thank them for Good. fixing that. And have a safe trip, and we'll talk to you next thank week. You. All right, Mary okay. Jo Bye. Foley, all about Microsoft.com. Bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to sit there? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, let me ask you. Oh, okay. She's shutting it down. Paul, let me ask you. You finished the book? Yes, sir. I did. What do you mean finished? What does that mean in this time? I really mean finished. (laughs) Like you're not going to write another one. No, you know, so for this book, because of the tight schedule and because of the fear that Microsoft could at any time could just drop this bomb and release something, you know. Right. Um, you we, want to be out day and date the same time the, the yeah, operation. we we did a lot of uh, we, we wrote the book, you know, so we wrote what what amounted to a six hundred and fifty page book based on the consumer preview and some interim builds after the consumer preview, so sort of not quite release preview. And um, it's weird because because of it because of the way it happened, when you write it like that, you feel like you're done, yeah. So there was a 30-day period there where I did nothing for the book, basically, because I, it's just hard to, I don't know if it's like a psychological issue, but when you write that much and you get that much done and you feel like you're done, uh, you don't want to do it anymore. You yeah. know, you're done. And then it was really hard to get back into it. But now that the release preview has come out we've in uh, more recent builds, too, um, we know really what's uh, going to be in the final product. Um, you know, we, we had to finish it. So for the past... Uh, three weeks or whatever, I've rewritten the book (laughs) and it involved going back to the chapters that have now been edited by three to four people, depending on the chapter and uh, answering queries, but also, and Raphael, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this by myself. Raphael is also. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We know that. Um, Well, I don't mean to take all the credit. I mean, but you know, and then you have to go and make changes because things have changed. A lot of the apps, it it have changed. Obviously the debt for the desktop, you know, the, the, the design of the desktop, the look of the desktop has changed. Um, that's just a screenshot issue for the most part. There's some language differences. You know, Windows Explorer has become File Explorer and so forth. But the big changes are in the, the chapters that deal with the apps. Mm-hmm. Um, the digital media apps, the entertainment apps, the Xbox apps, the productivity apps. All of these things have been updated very dramatically since the consumer preview and, and actually since the release preview as well. And we know that with the apps, it's a slice in time, you know, that these apps are going to continue to be updated. And that's a little bit of a problem, too, with a book. Um, and so you have to kind of present it as, look, I mean, at the time that this thing was completed, this is what these things look like. But it's almost a certainty that what you're going to see is a superset of what we're describing because these things are just going to continue to improve, you know. So, for example, I mean, um, up through the release preview, you could uh, log in with a, a Hotmail uh, an exchange, an Office 365 type account, Google, Gmail, and Google Calendar, you know, with the productivity apps. But they've added IMAP support. So, uh, for example, it's the Mail app. And so there have been some interesting changes like that. But the the next, uh, I actually finished the final chapter yesterday. Today I did some work on the appendix and on the, you know, some front matter type stuff. But um, the next step, of course, is that the publishing company is making the book. And so we'll have these probably PDF-based versions of the pages, which we now hold on to until the product RTMs. And then we can make sure that that RTM version of Windows 8 doesn't include any surprises. Um, which the good I suppose news it is it feels like it's it's pretty done. I remember last, well, for the Windows 7 yeah. book, you had to redo all your screenshots at the last minute. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I, as part of this three-week process, um, and I'm actually, I meant to ask, I haven't, I haven't asked it. I'm not, I'm not sure where this book comes in. What, one of the big changes I made was that some of the chapters had some information about legacy features that were in previous versions of Windows because I felt they were important for some reason. We had a big chunk of information about features that were new to IE9, for example, but weren't in the Windows 7 book because IE8 came with Windows 7. I took all that stuff out because we're, we're really running up against the page limit, and we want this book not to be humongous. And so as part of this editing process, I knew that I would have to add a lot of information, so I 
succeeded in cutting out all of the information about anything. There, there is literally, well, there's probably a, a mentions here and there, but there's no, there are no sections of the book that deal with stuff that used to be in Windows. Like everything in this book is brand new, um, which is very wow. interesting. Wow. At, at the first. wow. It's just, but that it's is what a change it is, isn't it? Yeah, there's so much stuff. I mean, it's really amazing. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, this is the second time with this book now I feel like I finished it. Um, but this one's is sort of true. I mean, I, I know that we will have things that we, we can make changes. I mean, we know this. Um, but we're not going to, you know, there's not going to be a surprise new chapter or, um, you know, any, any huge changes. So, so that's good. So that, you know, that's, it's, it's basically sitting and waiting now, you know, because we, we do have to check it against the final version. Right. There's, there's, there's always this fear because yeah. it's happened that sure. they're going to bite us. Oh, and I meant to say, so as part of the, the rewriting, I, I retook every single screenshot in the book, whether it needed it or not. We just, I just went through and just did it all over again. Oh my gosh. Um, and it involves a lot of editing. I mean, there's a, um, this, it's a, it's, it, and it's convoluted. There's weird setups you have to do. You know, there, there are uh, maybe there's a very small section in the chapter we have about user accounts and security where you're talking about domain accounts, and that means you have to set up a domain account. You know, it sounds like a little thing, but it oh. means you have to have a domain, right. and it means you have to uh, actually be able to log into it. It actually has to work and be connected, and you know, and you have to be able to show how these things work. Right. You know, so right. anyway, um, so that's done, but. That leads me into my uh, the the tip I have this week because well don't do it yet because I have to take a oh ad, I'm sorry an ad I break so, okay but that's I just wanted to get that update while Mary yep. Jo was gone yep. uh, on the book and I'm really pleased for you and uh, I will I'm, open a I'm bottle really... of champagne and drink it in, in its entirety <laughs> yeah, yeah in your honor it will be nice I I should just as a final thought on this um, normally I you know I work seven days a week I if anyone who follows my site knows that oh, they can come on posting. a yeah yeah they can come on a Saturday or Sunday and I post yeah. And uh, last weekend, I, on Saturday and Sunday subsequently, I tackled each day one of the, the two biggest chapters in the book. And so I actually didn't really write very much at all. I didn't write anything on my site on Saturday, and then I just posted something small on Sunday. But um, these chapters are – it was the Productivity Apps chapter and the – what I renamed to the Entertainment chapter, the Xbox uh, Entertainment Apps. Um, these things – the original version of the Productivity chapter had 90 screenshots. It was 65 pages of text. And I whittled it down to maybe 50 pages of text and I don't remember, 60-something screenshots. But um, it was literally eight hours of sitting in front of a computer all day, <sighs> rewriting and editing and taking screenshots. And that's literally all I did on Saturday uh -huh. and Sunday. You know? Horrors. It was, it was just uh, – so if you were wondering why I didn't do anything last week, and I was actually really busy. <laughs> but I just – it's weird for me to write and not have it be out in, in the public, you know? Like it's uh, – especially something of that magnitude. You know, I like to – I'm used to instant gratification when it comes to publishing stuff. So a book is obviously the worst case scenario for someone like me. But anyway, it was nice to – it's nice to get it done. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, your tip and tools of the week. But before we do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about our friends at Squarespace.com, the website Paul Thorat wishes he had. <laughs> Squarespace is the best hosting plus the best content management system on top of it. So what a, what a good combination. Um, and the reason why you want these together is, and I know this, uh, <laughs> When I, as as somebody who ran a WordPress site, you are constantly checking for you know security flaws. It's it's a nonstop process, and always you'd log in. Oh, you got to get another update. They do it for you. You're always patched. You're always up to date. You're always secure. I could tell you it's the best hosting in the world. We we've been uh, running uh, uh, tests, and it's very informal, but uh, I can do it at any time. In fact, we could do it right now. If you go to our Squarespace site, inside twit.tv, inside .twit.tv, that's our kind of in-house blog site. Um, if everybody goes there at once and tries to bring it down, you can't. Now, we can bring down, I can bring down any site in the world. We do it all the time uh, by just sending people there. But Squarespace is this, what happens is they're, they're using this great server technology, Java-based, interestingly enough, that will automatically... Uh, turn on the bandwidth as you need it. You gotta, you gotta give it a try. Squarespace.com. So now here's the deal. It's very simple to do. Go to squarespace.com right now. You don't need an offer code or anything. Just click that green "Try It Free" button. You got two weeks free to use the uh, Squarespace tools, the iPhone or the whoops, that's the wrong one here. The iPhone or the Android app. You could use the um, 
uh, the stats. You can use the the import engine. In fact, I would recommend this if you've got an existing WordPress type pad uh, blogger uh, site. You could import all your comments, your data, everything, and and really see what it looks like with a fully populated site. And then if you decide, hey, this is pretty nice. This is pretty sweet. Use all those custom templates, the 300 plus Google fonts, the great stats, the form building, all of that. Then check out this pricing. This They've redone the pricing and it's really affordable. $8 a month when you buy an annual plan for the standard. But I, I would suggest you look at the $16 a month. That is such a good deal for unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage, unlimited pages. They even do your domain. They hook you up if you buy an annual plan. Give them a custom domain name, no charge. They'll register it and attach it to your account. If you're a ham, for instance, you want to have a site for your uh, your uh, call sign, you know, w6twt.org, you just tell them that. They'll hook you up, set it up, and then your Squarespace site is that site. And all of this has a special advantage when you use the offer code Windows 7, 10% off any purchase by the annual plan for the most savings. Windows and the number 7, the offer code for the month of July. Windows 7, squarespace.com. We love these guys. They do great stuff. And they make Paul gnash his teeth because he's, he's got to so, use something else. We've been using .NET Nuke for a while. And oh, that's, before that's not bad. It's no, it's it's bad. And <laughs> trying to be nice. Before that, uh, my yes. company used uh, Cold Fusion, and I never went to Cold Fusion because well, you're I was a Delphi on... guy, so that's the same, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. But I, um, we were, I was, I had my own site, my own uh, stuff was on ASP, Microsoft right. ASP. Right. Uh, so we kept it on there for a while, and then we moved it to .NET Nuke. But we're actually switching to something new. I, I forget the actual name of it. It's the, it's the CMS system that um, Forbes.com uses. And we call it Pisces internally, but it's it oh. actually has a different name. Is it better? Um, Are you happy? It, 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 it has to be better. So I haven't switched yet, but my oh. site, because I've, I've basically bitched him on so much over the past two years, um, we're going to move my site first. And so uh, hey, look, now that Forbes the uses it, it has to be good. It actually looks good. So yeah, Forbes. I, I, have, yeah. I have hopes. They, I, you know, they do a lot of content. Um, now you. that the book is done, I, I can turn my attention to a, a number of things that ha I've been sort of putting on the back burner. But one of the things I'll do is uh, I've got an article. I want to I want to sort of engage with the readers a little bit and see what they're looking for. I, I have an idea for the design, a very simple, simple, simple design. Um, but hopefully it will be a better site, you know. Um, so anyway, we'll see. It's it's not Squarespace, but hopefully it will be it will be better. Well, good luck. Your tip, <laughs> of, your tip of the week, sir. Yeah, so it's it's two things in a way. Um, you know, looking back over the Windows 8 book, um, you know, there's some obvious recommendations around. You know, with Windows Phone, we talked about how you had to have a Microsoft account or what we used to call a Windows Live ID, and that how po properly configuring that account was kind of your key to success. And that's as true of Windows 8 as it was of Windows Phone. In fact, it's arguably more true. You really almost need to have this account uh, to use Windows 8 to its fullest. And so, actually, I didn't put that in the tip, but now that I'm <laughs> speaking my way through it, maybe that should have been a third thing. But two two things about Windows 8 that I think are just general statements, but I, I just having an understanding of these things will make for a better experience across the board. Um, one of them is that Windows 8 has a bunch of new keyboard shortcuts. We talked about this stuff, but a lot of them are Windows key plus something, you know, and that uh, if you could learn just a handful of these things, it would make a big difference. But if you could learn just one, the one that you should learn is Windows key plus C, and that brings up the charms bar. Um, that is your access point to virtually anything. And so one of the weird things about Windows 7 that I think is going to be disconcerting to users, aside from the obvious stuff around, you know, Metro being different and so forth, is just that sometimes you're going to get into a screen where you're not really sure how you got there. You don't know what it is, maybe because you've never seen it before. And because Metro is like this full screen experience, especially on a traditional computer, I think people are going to be a little blown away by that. And uh, the thing to remember is that Windows Key Plus C is one of those ways that will, you can get from there out of there, right? You can click the, the start charm to get back to the start screen or whatever. And if you just learn one keyboard shortcut, learn that one. But I would learn a few others. I, I mean, I think, you know, the keyboard shortcuts for bringing up things like uh, task switching or uh, the settings interface, which is global across all of the apps and experiences is important too. But uh, but you can actually get to that stuff basically, uh, not the task switching, but you can get through the settings interface certainly through through charm. So learn that one. I think that's a big deal. And that's going to, that will solve a lot of problems for people who are confused about Windows 7. The other one that's become increasingly obvious is that 
there's a feature in Windows 8 called file history. And Microsoft describes it as a backup application. It's a little more than backup. It's about file versioning. I look at it as the successor to previous versions. Um, everyone knows about the Apple time machine stuff, but that uh, Microsoft actually did it first. It's just that they never, never done a good job of advertising it. And um, Windows in Windows 8, file history is that feature. It's not enabled by default, which is uh, almost shameful, but enable it. And I, and I think that this is also going to be one of those things where once people realize that this capability is available, that as they mistakenly delete a file, and then they can go back and not just get the file back, but get the version of the file back from, say, two months ago or whatever, um, that that is a big deal. And regardless of how you configure this thing, because it can be configured to store its information on a, on a network share, on an external drive, wherever. It caches information on the, on the C drive if it's a mobile computer, so you can have that stuff when you're moving around. It doesn't really matter how you configure it, even though there are different ways to do it. It's just important that it's on. And it's a, it's a key part of the uh, reliability part of Windows 8, the ability to go back and get back to your stuff. And it's kind of the accompaniment, if you will, to the, the settings sync stuff that's built right into Windows 8, and also the uh, ability to reset and refresh the system uh, through PC reset. Um, and so I think those things together combine to create sort of a d disaster recovery solution of sorts that can really get you back up and running very quickly. So keyboard shortcuts, uh, Windows key plus C being the big one, and then just enable file history. It's one of those things I, I wish they actually advertised that the first time you boot it into Windows. It should tell you that right away. Do this. It's really important. Turn it on. Windows yeah. key C to get the charms. Yep. And then enable file history. Enable file history. And your software pick of the week. So I, I actually have two now. I added one. I don't know if you can see the, the addition. But the first one is Windows Server 2012 Essentials Beta. Microsoft released this, I think, yesterday. It is... Um, it's hard to explain. Microsoft has their traditional versions of Windows Server, of which there are now just two. So in the same way that they're simplifying the client, they're simplifying the server. So they used to have all these different versions of server. Now they have data center and standard. Standard is a little more expensive than it used to be, but it takes on some of the features that used to be exclusive to the higher end versions, including Enterprise Edition. And uh, it has some uh, slightly improved capabilities. But it has all of the features from data center. It's just, uh, it's just a licensing thing. But then they have these other servers. And in the past, the other servers, the servers that were based on Windows Server, used to include such things as Windows Home Server, Windows Small Business Server Standard, Small Business Server Essentials in the previous version, and then something called Storage Server Essentials. Uh, in this version of the product, they've actually gotten rid, and actually something called Foundation Server as well, which is a, a very low-end version of server that is only sold with new computers. So Foundation Server comes forward. And then all those other servers I've mentioned have been discontinued, and now we have something called Essentials. And uh, they just announced this a couple of days ago, but now we have a beta of it so we can see what it is. And what this thing is, is it's basically the next version of Small Business Server Essentials 2011, but it's also potentially a replacement for all those other things. And so it has storage features that make it interesting as a, a low-end storage uh, server. It has uh, media sharing and also that data replication stuff from storage spaces that make it interesting potentially as a home server. And, uh, and it, obviously it's a small business server that connects to either on-premises uh, servers like Exchange or SharePoint or SQL Server, but also to Office 365, which is really how it's optimized. So it's kind of one server that can do multiple things. And so the thing I've been looking at it for is whether this thing is a viable alternative to Windows Home Server. And so I've only installed it in a VM. Actually, right now it's installing next to me in a, in a physical server. Um, it's something I'm going to look at. I mean, the other alternative would be using Windows 8, of course. Um, and so we'll see. I think the only thing that's going to prevent this from being, well, there are two things that could prevent it from being an ideal solution for the home. One is the price. It's $450, which is very expensive. And that's you. just software. That's not... Just the software. No, you could probably buy it with a new server, too. In fact, I know oh, yeah. you can. Of um, you so maybe... It's still... It's still... Yeah, you're still looking at probably $1,000. Yeah for a fairly low-end server. So we'll see. I think How the price easy is, is it to use? <clears throat> it's, that's the thing. So the, the second part of it that makes it a little less attractive is it's a domain-based server. You know, with Windows Server Standard and Data Center, uh, the first time you set it up, you don't attach to a domain. You do that later. This version, they actually do domain creation because they assume it's going to be part of a dom uh, I'm sorry, the start of a new domain as part of setup, much like its predecessor. You can't work around it. It, it has to be the first server in a new domain. And so you think, well, 
that's not great for home. But the thing is, I don't think you actually have to use it as in a domain. You could just obviously it has its own little pretend domain, but you don't have to use it that way. So it could in fact work as a home server. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna test that to make sure that that theory is correct. But good. I believe it is. I think this would be a, this is actually a good project. Can yeah, you it's can a, it's you use uh, Windows Server 2012 as a home server? It, it has storage uh, spaces just like Windows 8, which is fantastic. Of course, um, it 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 has a server feature called the Microsoft Online Backup, which is potentially very interesting. An online backup service to the cloud, which they don't offer on client. Uh, curiously, um, yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see. The other one is that Microsoft just, while we were recording the show, released a new version of SkyDrive uh, for Windows. So this is the application that you install at Windows. Um, I think you should. I'm gonna. I have a. I'll have a blog post right after the show um, about it. It's not a big deal. A lot of it is under the covers. Changes is some nice. Uh, it's got kind of a nice new look to it, a little more metro y look. You know, to the little pop ups you get over the tray icon and so forth. But um, SkyDrive for Windows is a big deal and it's weird because it's like this simple little application but if you use Dropbox you kind of understand the notion of I save stuff to my computer but I'm also saving it to the cloud at the same time and that's what this is for Windows and I, I, I'm really switching everything over to this so for example my on my personal computer my, my documents folder is actually in SkyDrive it's not just on the computer so everything that I save automatically gets replicated not just to the cloud but also to all my other co connected computers and so on this, along with the other neat stuff in Windows 8, gives me that kind of seamless experience where my all my settings, my customized settings for the desktop and for the start screen are all carried forward from computer to computer. But so are all of my documents now, my data files, and eventually my music and my videos and all that stuff. I'm not there yet because SkyDrive doesn't natively support that stuff yet, but it will. And, you know, I'm obviously setting it up so that when that happens, I'll be ready to go. But it's... Um, you know, it's getting there. You can see, you can see how that's getting there. So that's a, it's free, obviously. And uh, anyone using Windows should be using this. Yeah, or Mac. Or Mac, way. although, uh, yeah, it, it is for the Mac. I, I, uh, I've had some weird replication issues from the Mac. Oh, I actually okay. had some files that were, in fact, our Windows Weekly show notes were renamed to, uh, <laughs> it probably just says Windows Weekly dash Paul's Mac Mini. <laughs> That's which, not a um, good name. I don't. Not that what name. I wanted it named. No. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> so I can't. I can't speak to the Mac version as well. But I know on Windows it does work very well. Nice stuff. Paul Therott is at the super site for Windows, soon to be uh, Forbes enabled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, soon to be slightly less sucky. Slightly less sucky. No, it's always been a great uh, content no, site. I, and it's really your pain, not the pain of the user that uh, we're talking about here. Oh, no, it's the user's pain, too. I mean, when the site doesn't work properly or they can't find something through search or the oh, RSS feed oh, just oh, stops working for some reason, that's uh, it's a problem for everybody. So. I don't think it's that bad. I've always liked it. And, of course, you can always get Pocket Paul, yep. uh, which has all of the contents in your pocket. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yes, for Windows Phone and, yes, iPhone, too. Yep. Uh, winsupersite.com. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley will be back next week at the same time, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on Thursdays. That's when we do the show live. If you could be here, we'd like it if you're here live because then I could talk to you in the chat and so forth. But if you can't, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we no make on-demand on versions available almost immediately after the show. Uh, on uh, all the all the places, iTunes, uh, Windows, uh, what is Zoom Music Store system? <laughs> Whatever the heck that Whatever thing is. Whatever the hell that's called. <laughs> and everywhere else, better podcasts are aggregated. Yeah. And I should always say this, free. It is free. No charge. Sure. We don't charge sure. you for this. We just make you listen to commercials. Uh, we want to thank, we also have uh, viewers in the studio. It's always nice to have viewers in the studio. If you want to be here, we welcome you. You can email my sister, Eva, at twit.tv. John Bach is here. He uh, used to use computers to control large buildings. I don't to, to, for a launch, <laughs> for monitoring energy, for HVAC, elevators, things like that. Nice to have you, John. Thanks for visiting us in the studio. Thanks you. Thanks to all of you for being here, and uh, we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.